Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the T95 E6, the American Tier 10 reward vehicle or free XP tank. The tank that you could earn in the Valor Ops from last season, shall you say? I don't know. It's a tank that I do enjoy. I've got a couple of replays up already on the channel from it. It's it, it's an okay medium. I think the DPM is just insane for a medium tank. It is fantastic. It's got DPM that's up there with the SDB1 for medium tanks, which is fantastic. I don't know how many times I'm going to say fantastic in, in one sentence. The one thing that's not fantastic, however, is the gun handling. The gun handling is pretty, pretty shoddy. It's probably better than the SDB1 in terms of gun handling. Even though stats-wise, it's worse. I'd probably say it feels better than the STB1 because I think the siege mode that well the pneumatic suspension is not siege mode on the STB1. The, the pneumatic suspension on it makes it feel worse, and it, it just doesn't quite work. I also think this this might have a slightly better aim time, but don't quote me on that. So generally, like this and the STB1 have a fairly similar playstyle in that sort of way with using just being able to abuse the DPM and the fact that this has 120 millimeter as well which is a lot better than a lot of medium tanks because the 120 millimeter means you can just overmatch things quite nicely so right now we put flanking shots into the town but there's not there's not much going off in terms of our team in the town there's two heavy tanks sat at a a6 god knows why I think there's not even AFK ones pinging people. And there's one person in the town, so they are. They've got, you know, we spotted six people heading that way, so we don't want to hang about to get shot in the side. So right now, I'm going to push aggressively and help on this flank over here. Now I don't. This position I'm going to right now is a very, very aggressive position, and it takes a bit of fortune that tanks like where that mouse is don't shoot you. But if you get here, you can put good shots into the back of those pushing up the one line. Which is why I'm not often a fan of pushing up the one line in general. Because you can get sort of trapped in this little bowl that these guys are in now. And get pummeled in the back very, very easily. So this is what I'm on about with abusing the DPM on this tank as well. Because we're just in a great position where the at this range the accuracy doesn't mean as much particularly. We're going to hit most of these at the range unless RNG really hates us and we can just slam in shots repeatedly. And that lip that we're just going over now is enough to partially protect us from the mouse. He, every time we popped up he probably would have had slim shots at the side of our turret. But we covered our tank most of the way basically so that it made it harder for him to shoot us. So we've dropped the premium rounds in because it's a mouse. Standard rounds are probably going to bounce most of the time, so load the heat just to make it easier. Switching back to AP now, though, because we're going to come up to these guys. There's a grill at 15 back there. There's also, I want to say, 268v4 back there, too. And we snap a shot at the griller. Didn't lead it that well. It wasn't fully aimed, so we don't pet it. But we do track him, so we end up with a nice two-point... Oh, uh, what it was, it was a thousand assisted off of the tracking of that guy. We're also up to 2.6k spotting because we were spotting the guy that was next to the mouse and we got a nice amount of assisted out of that as well. So we're now going to go hunting because we know there's two, those two guys that are in our heavy at C9 and we knew that there was others down there that were pushing towards him so this 268v4 is more than likely going to be alone. So we want to come and abuse him and we find him, we want to try and track him which again the 120mm is great for, it means that it just helps to have the bigger calibre to track and we try and track him again but he moves back at that exact moment so we don't quite get the, the tracking shot on him and um, yeah did you forget something Mr. 268v4 I, I, think you, mm, I think you forgot the turret stupid auto aim Stupid auto aim now. Go centre mass, and obviously he's still a well armoured tank. So the shot hit a well angled place and it bounced. 
unfortunately. That was just because I was la lazy aiming it. So there's only five guys left and they're all in the town. There's me and Turkey in this platoon in this game that are just now hunting. And we're going to see if we can get any more damage out of this game because the, our team is closer to most of them. And we spot this Valor. We're going to aim, 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 aim. Make sure that we get most of the way in. And we do. We put the shot in. We're up 5.9k damage now. And we're going to see if we can get another shot into this Valor. Because I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get another shot at the Super Conqueror because he's got people chasing him down. There's a heavy tank in the corner that, again, I don't think he'll get anywhere near. Turkey goes in on this Valor. Puts him into a one shot. And of course our lazy aim and RNG takes it straight into the turret. Turkey's like, what? You didn't finish him? No, because I'm a potato. He dies. And there's just this chieftain left in the corner, A9. Which, again, I'm highly doubtful I'll get anywhere near. And he gets shut down by the E5. So generally a nice run around Fisherman's Bay. Like I said, this is before 5.0. So this is all Xbox players this is before... 5.0 changes to the new, well, basically the new Fisherman's Bay. Ace Tanker Confederate, 5.9k damage, 2.6k assist, it's 8 point something maths, 8.5k combined, nice game, 22, 28 shots fired, 22 hits, 14 pens. Some of those bounces were my fault, stupid auto aiming, and we're on to the next game. And this game we're on Highway, we're on the good spawn on Highway with Swindle and Good Cat. And it's Team Destruction, which is one you don't see all that often on this map. But it's a nice one to have because it is screw capping. Yep. So we're going to go to the best place for tanks. Especially since we know we've got someone that's competent in the light tank in Swindle. We know things are going to get lit up. So we can come to this bush and hide. And hopefully things will get spotted to pummel shots into. And the first one spotted is this Sherry. Now, we'd l lead that absolutely terribly. And, of course, the shot whiffs. And this range, I am not the most confident in this gun either. We put one of the shot in. 300! 300. Okay, that's... Thank you, RNG. That was a good roll. We finish off the Sheridan. 428 damage. I mean, that roll was terrible. But we've, there's nothing else spotted coming across here now. So with Swindle coming across, we're hoping that it'll spot things that might be there. And currently he's spotted a couple of things that are up on the ridge lines, but you know it's, it's time to go ham. We're not going to sit back. We're going to put some shots in and run. A bit unlucky with where that shot went, but again, we didn't hit fully aim it. And where people normally camp, where we are pinged, we finally get spotted. It's the E4. On the move, I was talking about RNG. This tank's good handling being terrible. Well, that one flew in on the move. And the reason we like we we decided to push across was because there was nothing really spotted pushing. And we wanted to get to this ridge line here underneath their gun line. We want to get underneath the gun line so we can harass and put shots in. We don't want to get caught out in the middle of that field where they can just pummel you. We want to get into a nice position to harass, damage, and get flanking shots off and keep them spotted. So we're trying to angle for shots on this E4, but he's just keeping this building in between us quite nicely. Artillery whiffs the shell just, but we're waiting for the Z4 to drop around the corner. We could have shot a bit earlier there and we probably would have tracked and pen, but unfortunately we didn't. That one ricochets somehow off his side, but... Okay, he gets shut down anyway. That could have been quite painful. But now that they're gone, we are detected, but we're trying to wonder where. But now we're unspotted. It's probably best to try and move up to the second position. So this is first position. When you move up to this ridge line, this is uh, probably what I'd call first position. This is where you want to get to. You want to get under the gun lines. You can spot everything that's sat up on these ridge lines uh, along the nine line and sat on the campy bits at 789A. Now we're going to position two, which is this ridge line over here. This is the next position you want to push to. Good RNG there, <laughs> thank God. Takes out the T95 E6. And we can push to this ridge line here and get shots at these guys, like this Valor. Just get nice blanket shots into his rear. 
He's not focused on me at all. He's He wants this medium tank. So again, we're just going to abuse him. We're making sure that that TD is not really looking our way and he's not. So we can just rush in and help this guy against this Valor. Uh, it's a bat chap. And this, this Valor is so focused on him. That he just didn't even notice. Sure. So we managed to use the DPM, shut him down. And it's now pretty much where all their team is sat in the town or rushing now down towards, well, down the K-line. And it's team destruction, so we don't have to worry about a base. There is that, which is quite nice. And we're now just going to try and move into the town and put some, well, just harass again, generally. See if we can get shots at this Waffle Panzer IV. I don't think he's going to poke out. No, he's in the middle of all those buildings. He's got the back chat yellow in him. There's another TD right near him. And we're going to see if we can get shots at these guys. So there's this Chieftain coming towards Good Cat and his TD. And I'm not sure what he's going to do. Oh, I think he bounced on Good Cat then. I mean, Good Cat is in a Yag Panzer, so. 705 is sat on the top of the ridge line. We're pulling a shot into him. It's quite dangerous now what I'm doing because I, sitting still is not good. We put another shot in and we take a big slam from the town. And it's that Panzer 7. There's also a T-57 Heavy that was staring at us too. Which could have been bad because if he'd got a tracking shot at us, you know. And that M5355 gets shot by us for 449. We couldn't have rolled just high enough to kill it, could we? No, we left it on one health. And that's, um... Yeah, that's... Oh, no, I think... No, no, forget that. The, the show... Uh, Swindle shuts down. The M for 355. And now we've got this E100. Now, we've got a typical problem with the T95 E6 and the fact we've got no ammo. So we're, very, we're now left with our heat rounds. For which we're not going to be able to shoot him through that wall. So we've got to aim for this top bar... But he he drives out. He drives out, destroys the wall, makes it easier for us to hit the turret from above. So we bounce that shot. And we're doing something that this T95V6 can do as long as it doesn't catch like the Capola or anywhere. And that is it can side scrape. It's got 88mm of armor, of, well, of, of side armor. So side scraping's, you know, a reasonably valid, you know, valid tactic. Even against the big 15cm of the U100. So right now, I'm really just wanting help against this E100. I really, really want the help. But he bounces, which is quite nice, which means we've got enough time now to abuse him a little bit more. Right now, I'm the only one that's pummeling shots into him. I really could have done with a few shots from someone else. And we pop a shot into his lower plate. And artillery. Of course, artillery from the town says, Hello there, I'm a part of this game too. Shuts me down, unfortunately. He loops it round that, I mean, that's just a lucky. Splashed us round the corner and finishes off with that 500 health or whatever we had left. Which just leaves Good Cat and the others to chase down this arty and kill it, which is going to happen. If, I mean, if an artillery carried this battle from the position it's in now, I would be shocked and surprised. And I'd probably give I'd probably give them fair praise because if they ever did that, fair play. This tank can be frustrating to play the T ninety five E six because it's it it can be RNG dependent. The gun on it really lets you down so often that it can be just frustrating because you'll have fully aimed shots at tanks that you, you just shouldn't hit I mean sorry you just should hit and they just don't go in but then you have shots that you hit you fire on the move like you've seen a couple of times in this game and they just fly in it is yeah it can be frustrating but in general I quite like it and we've got an ace tanker you know six what nearly 7.8k combined it's it's an okay tank it's quite good so as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.